Hello everyone. Welcome back to SJ's classes. This is the fourth video in my series pertaining to Malayalam literature in English translation. In the first video, I gave you a very brief introduction to Malayalam literature. In the second video, which came up in two parts, I discussed the poet Oyen V. Kurup and his poem A Requiem to Mother Earth. The third video too came up in two parts and I discussed Balajandran Chulikard and his poem Where is John? In this video the lesson, I will be discussing the poet Vishnu Narayan Nambudri and his poem The Autograph Tree. Before we move into the poem, let us have a very brief discussion on the biography of the poet. Vishnu Narayan Nambudri was a native of Tiruvalla village in Patanandita district. His career spans through different disciplines and places. He learned Sanskrit in the beginning, did higher education both in physics and English. He has served as a research officer at the State Institute of Languages. He has also taught in various government colleges for more than 30 years. He has taught at places like Calicut, Kollam, Patambi, Ernagulam, Tripunitura, Chittur and Thiruvandavura. Even after ret retirement from service in 1994, he worked as a chief priest of his family temple at Tiruvella. His poetry did not possess any of the pessimism or radical fervor of the modernist period even though he wrote during the time of modernist poets like Ayyappa Panikkar and Atu Ravivarma. In his use of language too, he differed from several of his modernist contemporaries. For Nampudri, poetry is an extension of both the cheerful and gloomy aspects of one's life. Nambudri enriched the Malayalam literature with 13 volumes of poetry, 3 books on literary criticism, 4 anthologies and 3 translations. His major poetry collections include Swadandrathe Kurch Origidam which came out in 1968, Pranaya Gidangal that came out in 1971, Bhumi Gidangal 1982, Mukham Evide 1982, Aranyagam 1987, Ujjainile Rappagalugal 1991 and Enda Kavitha that came out in 2008. He has also written critical essays out of which Kavitha DNA that came out in 1985 is a very popular one. He has also done translations. More than his reputation as a professor of English, Vishnu is much better known for his enormous contributions to Malayalam literature as a poet par excellence. He is the recipient of several awards for his poetry, which include the prestigious Kerala Sahitya Academy Award in 1979, Kendra Sahitya Academy Award in 1994, Oda Kuril Award in 1983, Ashan Prize in 1996, Changambura Award in 1989, and Ullur Award in 1992. The title of Sahitya Kalandi and the Academy Award for Total Contribution also have been conferred on him. Vishnu Nambudri had also been actively associated with Kerala Sahitya Samidhi, Pragriti Samrakshana Samidhi, Kerala Sahitya Academy and Kerala Kalamandalam in different capacities. So that is a short introduction to the poet. Now let's move into the poem, The Autograph Tree. The Autograph Tree, which has the Malayalam title Kayupu Maram, is taken from the collection Parikramam, which was released in 1998. It is an outcome of Vishnu Narayan's visit to Ireland, where in Cool Park, he comes across a tree engraved with the signatures of great Irish writers. 
Cool Park is a nature reserve located in Galway, Ireland. It was constructed in the late 18th century and it has a copper beech tree which is popularly called the autograph tree that is engraved with the initials of many of the leading figures of the Irish literary revival including W. B. Yeats, George Bernard Shaw, John Millington Sinch and Sean O'Casey. It is also interesting to note that it is the death of Robert Grigory's Robert Grigory is the man who built the house and the place. So it is the death of Robert Grigory's grandson's son which inspired W.B. Yeats to write an Irish airman forces his death and many other poems that were included in that collection. So that is an interesting point that I have to share there. Let us read the poem. Along the valleys down which the goats return from hunts, along the path of swans in flight, greeting the cold ripples of waterfalls with fish turning and twisting, illuminating the core of Ben Bulbin, laid out for the carnival of life, along the royal path that reeks of the blood of suicide scots, along the path of deliverance, rested with firm steps, head held high, in the tales of Kiltartan heroes. Everywhere I look for the light that touched the hearts of great men, nurtured by divine grace. So the poet is in the cool park and he is taking a walk across the park and he is describing to us the sights that he sees in a figurative manner. He says, along the valleys down which the gods return from hunts. So the valley is described as a place or as rather as a dwelling place of goats where the goats return after hunting or probably after great wars. So this is a place where the goats used to take rest after their big hunting expedition. So this is more or less like a haven, a safe place for even goats. Along the paths of swans in flight, greeting the cold ripples of waterfalls with fish turning and twisting. So he also describes the other sights that he sees at this particular park. Along the path of the swans in flight, so he sees certain swans who are in their flight. He sees the cold ripples that are being created by the waterfalls. Ripples, as you know, are small waves that come on the surface of liquid. So this ripples these ripples are created by the falling water as part of the waterfall so you have the sight of the swan you also have the sight of ripples being created by the water that falls on falls down as part of the waterfall and there you also have the fish the fish are turning and twisting and thus it illuminates the core of ben balban ben balban is a rock formation that you see in Ireland. So it illuminates the core of Ben Bulban, the shining surface of the fish, the turning and twisting movements of the fish, it reflects the light and thereby it illuminates the core of Ben Bulban. Turning and twisting, illuminating the core of Ben Bulban, laid out for the carnival of life and all these brings about a celebration of life. The flying swans, the falling waterfall, the ripples that are created, the turning and twisting fishes, the illuminated core of this great rock formation, all these are all these hint at the celebration of life in nature, in what you see around you. Along the royal path that reeks of the blood of suicide score. Along the royal path. 
so the path is be being described as a royal one and it smells of the blood of suicide scots the poet says that a poet talks about the possible destruction of the house during irish civil war as i said earlier this house was built by robert grigory and later on it witnessed this great civil war that happened between 1922 and 23 and there was lot of bloodshed and probably the poet vishnu nambudri is referring to that bloodshed that happened in its on the campus of that house along the royal path that reeks reeks means smells the reeks of the blood of suicide scots along the path of deliverance deliverance here means recovery along the path of deliverance so you have the royal path which smells of uh, blood and you also have the path of deliverance the path of deliverance rested with firm steps rested means obtained rested with firm steps head held high in the tales of kiltartan heroes kiltartan is a place in ireland now if you have uh, read uh, yeats an irish airman foresees his death you will uh, you might have seen that he too had have made reference to kiltartan the lines uh, are my country is kiltartan crows my countrymen kiltartan spoor this is a verse from an irish airman foresees his death and even wb eights have made reference to this particular place called kiltartan so this uh, these parts hold the story of the bloodshed how people try to get back this place how they try to recover this place probably from the enemies and how they obtained it through great sacrifice and all these are encoded inculcated into the parts that you see in this park everywhere i look for the light that touched the hearts of great men nurtured by divine grace so the poet knows that this is a place from where or this is a place where great men have visited this is a place where great men have lived where great men have walked by so he is looking for inspiration everywhere he is looking for the stories of such great men everywhere everywhere i look for the light that touched the hearts of great men he is probably seeking inspiration that touched the hearts of great men nurtured by divine grace so he is looking for that particular light that touched the great that, that touched the hearts of great men and who were nurtured by divine grace now those great men grew up, grew up because of the divine interference and it was the divine interference that they gave that gave them the nourishment that they need to become great men in life and the poet vishnu nambudri is actually looking for that light he is looking for that that divine interference that divine influence this forest land i arrive at the time when flowers bloom my feet tied with creepers these granny trees the ones who nursed history the ones who cool the midday sun it's heat on their canopies it's they who take me around i stop before a huge tree big enough for five men to hold tough as the anjanum stone wide eyed i look some have scribbled the truth with styluses on its scraggy bark yogis warriors elders and panans those who knit into shape the treasured picture of their motherland this forest land i arrive at the time when flowers bloom now he, the boy is referring to the spring season and in ireland it generally starts in march so probably he made his visit there during the month of march this forest land i arrive at the time when flowers bloom my feet tied with creepers so there are many creepers on the ground these granite trees the trees are very old and that is why the poet 
addresses them as uh, granny trees the ones who nursed history so these granny trees these creepers these flowers all these place have nursed history it has history to share it has maintained the history of the past and it has so much to convey the ones who nursed history the ones who cooled the midday sun so probably the poet is addressing the trees and saying that this is what maintains the history of this place these trees are so old so ancient that it has recorded the history of a long time and it is also these trees that cool the midday sun by providing shade they take the heat on their canopies canopies means the covering here since it uh, since we have the trees the trees act as a canopy as a covering and it protects the people who are there from the intense heat of the sun the ones who cool the midday sun its heat on their canopies it's they who take me around so it's nature who guides the poet it's the trees it's uh, whatever that sees around him that takes him through his path and finally the poet comes to a particular tree i stood before a huge tree now this is the copper beech tree where in which great men have made their initials uh, the tree which is also known as the autograph tree i stood before a huge tree big enough for five men to hold tough as the anjanum stone so the tree is so huge that it is big enough for five men to hold five men can circle around the tree and hold it that is how strong that is how big its bark is a huge tree big enough for five men to hold tough as the anjanum stone now anjanum stones are stones from which idols are made it's believed that lord krishna's idol guruvayurappan's idol uh, has been made out of this anjanum stone so it's as tough as the anjanum stone so it's a huge tree it has a sturdy bark wide eyed i look some have scribbled the truth with styluses so the poet says that some have scribbled the truth with this with the styluses and these some refer to wb eights show singe shona kesi etc these are the great men who have scribbled their initials who have scribbled their signatures on to the tree so he says some have scribbled the truth with styluses styluses are pointed tools for writing so they have used some kind of a pointed tool and they have recorded truth into it their name that is the truth their existence their presence their greatness that is what poet describes as the truth some have scribbled the truth with styluses on scraggy bark craggy means rugged uneven having a rough surface on scraggy bark and who are they yogis warriors elders and pandits yogis are people who uh, practice yoga warriors you know elders also you know pandits as you know are part of uh, our mythology there were people who used to come to this rich houses this elite houses and and they used to sing and uh, pandan song can be equated with uh, the folklore ballads the ballads that have a story to convey i'm sure you are aware of this group called pandan pandans yogis warriors elders and pandans those who knit into shape the treasured picture of their motherland now these people they have made so much contributions through their writings and through their uh, songs that they constitute the history of ireland it is these people these yogis warriors elders and pandans who constitute the history of ireland they are the ones who knit into shape the treasured picture of their mother ireland they are the ones who give us a picture of the history of ireland a picture of the motherland a picture of or a picture behind what we see now so this is all that i will be discussing in this video lesson in the next part of this video i will discuss the remaining stanzas
Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video lesson.